so those for those of you that have been waiting, so we're going to make this quick. But it's here. I have compiled all the stuff I got in the last two weeks. Nothing too super extravagant, but a bunch of really neat stuff. It'll definitely bring back some memories. Thank you very much for stopping in to episode three of my Retro Gaming Garage Sales Find Unboxing live stream. So let's get right to it. Thank you for checking the video out. Thank you for all the likes. I appreciate the support, fam. Let's do it. So this is going to be a little random today. Like I said, a lot of time. So one of the first things I picked up, not really totally pro, but it's video game related. I got this Super Mario Brothers U, Wii U collector's puzzle. Pretty neat little collection item. Anyhow. So I grabbed that. It was cheap. Price was right, you know. I said, screw it, I'm getting it. All right. This is a little bag full of Amiibos that I picked up. Kirby. I don't know who that dude is. You got Bowser. Mega Man's in there. Just some Amiibos. It was $2 for the bag. Amiibos aren't cheap. I said, screw it. I grabbed them. You know, so some Amiibos, Kirby. Bowser. Mega Man. I like Amiibos. This is going to be random, guys. I'm going to do as much as I can to fill you guys in on everything as quickly as possible. An older lady sold me a couple different boxes of things. We'll go through some of her stuff now. This little shoe box. When I opened it up, it was full of Sega Genesis games. This actually is an Atari game, Space Battle. Uh, Space Battle. That's an Atari game. But the rest of the stuff in here was Sega Genesis. She opens it up. A bunch of Sega Genesis games. Those look sweet. So these are your boxes. What's up, Don Don? These are your boxes that your original Sega Genesis games came in. They're plastic, hardcover. We've been through this before, but for new people to check out the stream, you open up your instruction booklet usually is here on the left side. Right there is where your cartridge goes. Cartridge is not in this box, obviously. VR Troopers, you guys remember that? Back in the Power Rangers day. We got some Shaq Fu, Shaquille O'Neal. Taking part in some karate action. Kind of a fun Mortal Kombat, uh, Street Fighter related type of game back in the day. Do, 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 This is the first Sonic game ever made. You guys have seen many copies of this already in my other two episodes. Pick up another box copy of that. What's going on, Jen? Eh? Hey, how's it going, Jen? Thanks for stopping. Raymond, welcome, buddy. That one's upside down. All right, this is Taz. This is a really fun game for the Sega Genesis. Taz and Escape from Mars. You get to be the Tasmanian Devil wreaking havoc all over Mars. <coughs> Excuse me. Frog in my throat already. Then we just got some random games. This game I have no clue. I've never played it. Landstalker. Looks kind of cool. Kind of RPG-ish. Scrolling medieval style game. Looks fun. Ninja Turtles Tournament Fighters. This is a battle style game featuring all the Ninja Turtles characters. Kind of like Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat. Earthworm Jim. I know you guys have heard of Earthworm Jim. That is the first Earthworm Jim game made right there for the Sega Genesis. Go, go, Power Rangers. If there's any Power Rangers fans, pretty fun game on, on the Genesis as well. Vector Man. Vector Man was slightly underrated. Pretty cool cover art on the sticker. Here's our Shaq Fu cartridge. Some cartridges on the Sega were bigger than other cartridges, as you can see. Whoa, I almost knocked the box on the floor. That would have been really bad. All right, so the cartridge on the bottom is the original size. The cartridge on the top is the bigger size. There's just a few mixed games that were made with a bigger size cartridge. This is Hard Driving, a racing game. The reason I show every game is in case some of you guys have played these. Bring back those memories. NHL All-Star Hockey. All right, so we whipped through that box real quick. Let's put everything back in. As neatly as possible due to the shortage of time that I have here. Because so i got to go play some football, man. I was hoping I'd get somebody to live stream it for us, but it's not looking like it. Okay, that's not going to work out either. That box is down. Yeah. All right, so next. These are original Nintendo. I got two of these. These were the uh, mat that you put on the floor. It plugs into the original Nintendo. You put them on the floor, and it's kind of like a twister board game setup almost. You got these red and blue dots all over this mat. It's called the power pad, all right? And you um, you basically play like track and field, and you would actually get on these mats with your socks on, no shoes, or you'd destroy them. And you would 
jump on whatever dot showed up on the screen while you were playing the game. You'd have your controller in your hand, you'd be watching the screen, and when the dots popped up, you'd have to hit the dot to uh, like do a hurdle or sprint you know, faster or whatever. But this is your power pad. Do not wear shoes, people. All right, so original Nintendo power pad. I actually got two of them. Ironically enough, I paid $3 for one and two for the other. You can see one's in much brighter, better condition than the other one. But I'm sure the other one just needs to be cleaned. So we got two of the NES power pads. Let's fold this up and put it back. All right, so the chat has disappeared, guys. I do see you guys a lot. I appreciate you being here. Thanks for stopping in. I know some of us were patiently waiting the last two weeks for this, so I wanted to make sure I got it done for you. It's going to be quick, but it's going to be informative, and uh, you get to see everything I got over the last two weeks. All right, this is a box of random game stuff. Um, I've got these from different sales, but I was just kind of filling the box because I was hustling and, you know. So first we got a box, original box Nintendo DS Lite. It's a black console. This is the second model of the Nintendo DS. I have a model, I think, in the package I'll be showing you here shortly. Pop it open quick. I paid $3 for this. I paid $3 for this. You open it up, all your contents are in there. The only thing I don't have is the charger, but the chargers are kind of universal. You know, you can find them from any DS and that's the same thing. But this is your Nintendo DS Lite. This is a black one. They flip open kind of like an old school cell phone. Game on top and bottom screens, both screens. Speakers on the left and right side of the top screen. You got your D-pad on the left. Your four buttons on the right with your select and start being in the bottom right corner. Nintendo DS Lite. The only other things really present in there are the instruction booklets and like the, the warranty and stuff like that. So a little box DS Lite to add to my uh, massive collection of boxed items that I have. Find a nice little comfortable spot for that up on the shelf with a lot of the box stuff I put in here already. I'm a big Pokemon guy. Pokemon has some value, quite a bit actually, and it's very popular. It's a high seller. This actually is a, I believe, McDonald's toy. Uh, Burger King. This is Burger King, but this here is Mewtwo. Mewtwo is one of the rarest, hardest Pokemon to catch, and this is actually a pretty old toy. So I would imagine, even though it was produced by Burger King, it's going to have some value to it. So I grab that. All right. You guys like Yoshi? This is just like another little McDonald's or Burger King Yoshi toy. But whenever I find whenever I find these Nintendo-related toys, I buy them up, you know, because I'll have a collection of them that I'll play with like a little child someday. But no, in all reality, um, they do have some value. They do sell high and uh, just need little things to collect, you know. So, so this lady sold me some Game Boy and DS stuff, and she went up in her attic and she got all the boxes from all the games that she had. She literally had a ton of the boxes she just held on to. So a lot of these don't have games in them. But as you guys probably know by now from my other streams, when you have the box with the game, it's worth much more. Just the cartridge by itself or the game by itself, they're worth quite a bit depending on what they are. But when you got the actual manuals and everything, it really raises up the amount of profit and the collectability of the games. So I got a whole bunch of DS and 3DS cases and some games and some Game Boy games as well. Pokemon Ranger... Pokemon Conquest. Oh, I'm throwing stuff on the ground. Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. Pokemon is really valuable, really sought after stuff by adults who are going to like. They're just really popular games. Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. This person basically had almost every Pokemon game available for the console. Another different Pokemon Ranger. This is a 3DS case. Pokemon Alpha Sapphire. Wish I could have got that game because it's actually worth quite a bit. Um, this game I never heard of, but it looked pretty cool. The World Ends With You. Kind of a little dark title, but it looks pretty neat. Pokemon Dash. Looks like a racing Pokemon game. We got a Kingdom Hearts game for the 3DS. Like I said, these are all empty cases. But when I find these games, by immediately inserting them into these cases, it gives the games more value. Kingdom Hearts for the DS. I grabbed all the boxes that I knew the games were worth some money. Pokemon Black version. So as I find these cartridges throughout the garage selling world, I will add them to these cases and we'll have some pretty neat little collectible games worth some money. 
Pokemon White version 2. Pokemon Platinum version. Yes, I know, a lot of Pokemon games. Pokemon Diamond. What's up, Aaron? How's it going, man? Thanks for stopping in, buddy. All right, so I think that's pretty much all of our empty cases. We have a couple more floating around in here. We got another Kingdom Hearts for the DS, a different one. Harvest Moon. Another game, some of these Harvest Moon games actually go for quite a bit. We got a copy of Digimon Digital World for PlayStation 1. It's worth a little bit. What's up, Zindo? How you been, man? This is a PlayStation 1 game. They come in like a CD case, your music CD case. They're the same size disc. PS1. This lady that gave me all the empty boxes, she also had a 3DS box just sitting in her attic. She brought it down, too. It's just a box. But I was like, hey, I'll, if you're not doing nothing with that box, I'll take it. So she gave me the 3DS box. I stuffed some games in it. This here, this is your very first original Nintendo DS. It's kind of bulky. It's kind of heavy. This is the first one they made. There was multiple colors. That obviously is a Guitar Hero skin that's on it. Same thing as the other DSs, though. Top and bottom screen, D-pad on the left side, buttons on the right, but your select and starter up on the top of the right side instead of the bottom. And then I just grabbed some of these little games. Some of the games she actually did have. Um, a couple of these I got to put in the cases because I do have the cases for them. That Pokemon Dash, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, a couple of those. Those are DS games as well. For Game Boy Advance, we got a Pokemon Emerald. This is what the Game Boy Advance games look like. There's three style of Game Boy games. The Advance are much smaller than the other versions. Harvest Moon for the Advance. Kingdom Hearts for the Advance. And then I got a Pokemon Sapphire. Pokemon Fire Red. These are all Game Boy Advance games and they're all worth a significant amount. They're really good. Now I got this little case here that holds ds games three of them there's pokemon platinum pokemon blue ranger and pokemon diamond in there so that stuff i all got off the same lady um very good price he kind of wanted a real lot more and i was like yeah well you can uh go ahead and throw them back in your attic then because this is a garage sale and i'm not trying to pay that so she dropped her price down and i grabbed them Copy of Perfect Dark for the Nintendo 64. If you guys remember Perfect Dark or the N64, that's that. We got a Toys R Us exclusive. As you can see, it says Toys R Us on top. I got this from the same lady. I'm going to have to look it up and see what it's worth. But Toys R Us exclusive Game Boy Advance. All right. These are normally like a purple color. This one's blue because it's a Toys R Us exclusive. I randomly picked up off a uh, tarp on the ground a Nintendo Zapper Gun, an orange one. If you guys remember the original Nintendo Zapper Gun, that's one of those. We got a purple Game Boy Color, another variation of the Game Boy. This one was earlier than the Advance. All right, so that's that box. I hope that I'm not doing this too fast for you guys, but like I said, I'm on a real time limit right now because I want to get to the field, get stretched out, warmed up, and play some football today, and I don't really want to get there late. Last time I got there late, and I wasn't very thrilled about it. All right, we still got a lot to do. This I'm very happy about. This is not retro. But I've been looking for one of these for, for whatever reason. I mean, I could probably get one at GameStop or whatever. But as far as yard sales and pawn shops go, these are very hard to find. And I've been looking for one for a long time. So this kid had 90 bucks on this. He was selling this for 90 bucks, And I was like, dude, you could probably get one used or new at GameStop for that. And, he, and his father, it was a young kid, probably 12 years old. And his father comes over and says, what would you be willing to offer for it? If you don't sell it, he's going to trade it into GameStop. So I was like, all right, well, I'll tell you what. I'll go on the GameStop app on my phone. I'll show you exactly what kind of store credit or cash GameStop would give you for it, and I'll give you that amount of cash. What's up, James? Thanks for stopping in, buddy. So I open up. We got an in. This is the first Wii U that I own. This is the first one I purchased. Overall, it's in pretty damn good condition. The console crashed a little bit on both sides and the outside. Great. The handheld, the screen and everything, the handheld's actually phenomenal. This is a Wii U. This is a newer console, so I'm not going to go too much into it. It's not retro, but it's the first one I've ever found that I've actually purchased. I got it. For, I ended up getting it for $25. And I jumped online. They still sell at GameStop for over $100. So as usual, GameStop ripping people off, giving you $25 for a console they sell for $100. That's still a relatively new console. Okay, this is probably one of the neater boxes that I found. 
This is in television, guys. I know I showed you the ColecoVision collection I got in the last video. Well, this whole box, this person sold me this box and two other boxes full of stuff for 20 bucks. And that's what they wanted for it, they asked 20 bucks. So these are in television games, which are around the Atari and ColecoVision time. In the original boxes, I've got to, you know, give them a little love and attention quick to get them straightened out a little bit. But we got a bunch of these. And the only thing inside of these is this little piece of plastic that the cartridge sits in. All right, so this is ColecoVision Baseball. I'm going to fly through this box real quick. We've got our ColecoVision Baseball. This one's called Space Battle. As you can see, the box is in much better condition for that one. These are all in television. I'm sorry, not Coleco in television. Tennis. It's crazy that they had video games like this back in this time, man. These are the 80s. Skiing, Mattel Electronics skiing. NBA basketball. Probably one of the NBA basketball games they ever made. Kind of neat to have. This is triple action. It looks like a simulation game. It's got airplanes, tanks, and trucks and cars on the bottom. Three different little games. This one's cool. I was really happy when I saw this one because this originates on these old consoles. Donkey Kong. And that's actually worth quite a bit of money. This is the arcade release of Donkey Kong, and it's actually worth quite a bit. If you, for those of you youngins that aren't familiar with Donkey Kong, at least the old Donkey Kong, this is what Donkey Kong looked like when he first started out. You were Mario, as you can see in the middle of the package there, the little red guy with the white face. The princess with the yellow hair of the blonde is up on the top of the map, and you see Donkey Kong off to the right. So basically, you're Mario trying to avoid all the Donkey Kong barrels that he's rolling down the stage at you. You have to jump over them or break them to get to... Um, to get to the princess and save her by defeating Donkey Kong's minigame. This is called Tron. If you guys were Tron, this might be worth some money too. I gotta look into it. Maze of Tron. But I was absolutely shocked with all these box games that I found in this one box. Bowling. A whole mess of games in here still. Poker and blackjack. So that's kind of like your little casino game. Utopia. Not really completely and totally sure what that is. Interesting, though, interesting. All right, this is Word Fun. So this was kind of probably one of the first games that was made to help teach children how to spell. Nice little concept there. Astro Smash. I'm just showing you all these in case, like I said, some of you guys have played some of these. Aaron Woods or any of you guys when you were younger. Backgammon. The board game Backgammon on a video game. Royal Dealer. Whoever owned this was big into cards and board games from the looks of it. NFL Football. So we got the NBA basketball, we got the NFL football. If we take this out. It's kind of a little bit of a, a little bit of a mess because I didn't really have time to organize it. But this is the Intellivision console right here. Thanks, Git. INTV System 3. That's your Intellivision. These are what your controllers look like right here. It's got all these little push buttons on here, and they actually sit right in here. Like I said, I just haven't had time to organize all this stuff yet because I've been really busy the last couple weeks. But it comes with two controllers. Those have to be some of the first NBA NFL games. Yes, I agree, Aaron. So that's your Intellivision console. That's that box. That is probably the um, rarest and oldest stuff that I will be showing in this video. I just kind of wanted to get it out of the way quick. The stuff back and we'll move on so that's some box and television stuff with a console at a very 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 cheap price basically given to me let's move this in the storage unit wait time flies when you're having fun doesn't it I'm be careful not to crush these and dig these out for now and put them here so they don't get smashed because after we organized my unit i bought so much furniture and stuff in the last couple weeks that i'm kind of overpacked now all right so then i found this little briefcase Found this little metal briefcase on the on the ground at a sale. I'm like, all right, that's cool. Let's take a look at it. Pop it on real quick. We got. Oh, it's upside down. Trying not to break shit. So this actually had the Game Boy Advance SP in it. I paid four dollars for the whole set. This is the flip like cell phone version of the Game Boy. 
This is the coolest Game Boy they ever made by far. Um, it's the newest Game Boy that they released. This is the last one that was out right before the DS. Your charger's here. Plugs right in the console. And then these are a bunch of advanced games. Crash. We got some Winter X games. A little Tiger Woods Golf. I'm sure somebody in here has played Tiger Woods Golf. Those games are kind of fun. These are some board games on a cartridge. Battleship. Risk. Clue. Dr. Sudoku. If you guys play Sudoku. Mario Golf. That's a fun game. I have that for the N64 as well. Finding Nemo from the movie. Uh, we got a little Madden action in this little case here. Madden 2005 it looks like. Um, I don't know what this one is. I'll have to open it. Looks like Finn and Furbius maybe. Uh, no. Phil of the future. No clue. Interesting. A little backyard baseball in that one. Backyard basketball. These are like uh, kids' versions of sports games. Rayman Legends. A little Bayo Blade. If you guys are into that, Bayo Blade or whatever it is. A little Need for Speed. That's right, that's a shout out to you, Speed Kill. And then the system came with this little zip up case. You put the system in there and you lock it up. Right, so that's that. Let's move on. My time's winding down here. I gotta get it, get you through the whole bit. We're only about, well, probably not even halfway done yet. I gotta get moving. All right, this next box of random stuff. I bought this whole box off of one lady. Um, I, I think I paid thirty-five dollars for the box. It's got one of our Nintendo sixty-four consoles in it. Some original Nintendo games. Doctor Mario. For those of you that remember the original Nintendo. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Turtles in a shell. Turtle power. That's just a third party N64 controller. Let's get that out of the way. Alright, here's your N64 controller. Yeah, I hear you, Aaron. I hear you, man. This is your N64 controller. In my opinion, the neatest controller ever made for any video game console. It's got this little tripod handle on it. A lot of buttons. A lot of buttons for a mid-90s gaming console. We got another orange zapper gun for the original Nintendo. This is your original Nintendo controller once again. Very basic, very simple. Nintendo power plug. They were massive. That's for the original Nintendo. This is your power plug for your N64. That great big huge thing pops into the back and then you got your outlet plug on the end. Um, this is a version of an RF adapter. This actually is universal. This would hook onto your old school TV for either one of these consoles. I think she used them for both, but this right here was the original Nintendo original adapter. This is the one that came with the console when you bought it back in 85. And then we have another original Nintendo. She sold me her nin original Nintendo collection and her 64 collection for a robust $35. Super Mario Duck Hunt in the console, which is what came with the system. So there wasn't a whole lot of original Nintendo stuff, just the three games, the two controllers and the plugs, but that's still quite worth quite a lot. Now, N64, we did quite well. Mario Kart 64, that's like a $50 game. Super Mario 64, that's the one that came with the console originally. That's like a $20, $30 game. And we have a gold cartridge, collector's edition, Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. This is a very valuable game. Very popular, very high-selling game. I've got to do some work with a hair dryer or something to heat these stickers up and peel them off without damaging the label. This is Jeopardy. Yes, it is, Aaron Woods. I have a few of those, man. I have one boxed at home. I'll show you on stream sometime. I have that game boxed at home. The box art is phenomenal, and it's worth like 350 bucks used. Diddy Kong Racing, kind of like a spin-off of Mario Kart. Another copy of Perfect Dark. Mario Party 3. If you've never played a Mario Party game, then you have not played video games. The Mario Party games are really cool. That's part three. There's, I believe, like 10 or 11 of them now. WWE No Mercy or WWF No Mercy. 
and a WCW NWO. That's that for that box. So let's uh, get this stuff put back in real quick. Easier to take the stuff out than just put it back in. Trust in that. But when I open my store, when I open my store in a couple years, I'm just gonna take all these boxes in and just start putting stuff all over the tables, and I'm gonna organize it as I go. I think that'll be part of the fun. Every day when I go to work, I have hundreds, I have hundreds of boxes, hundreds of bag coats that I can pull out and just open up and be like, oh my God, I got this like 10 years ago. I forgot I had this. Cool, let's clean it up and put it up on the shelf for sale and see what lucky person wants to buy it. So that box is done. I picked this up. This isn't exactly retro. It's not that old. But every now and then I fancy a video game related board game. This is an electronic Tetris 3D tower. It's kind of, as you can see, like a Connect 4 setup kind of game, but it's actually Tetris in a board game. All the parts are there. I paid three bucks for this. It's electronic. It makes sounds, lights up, all that kind of shit. So I was like, that is freaking cool. I'll take it. And I bought that. All right, this next box here I actually got yesterday morning. Not this bag, but this box. There's a Sega Genesis Model 2 in here. I gotta get this out of here. I gotta get these out of here. All right, so I paid $5 for what's in this box. All right, five bucks, she said. I'm like, how much you want for this stuff? And hey, give me $5. Okay, deal. Sega Genesis Model 2. And there's also one of the only handhelds that Sega ever made in here. This is called a Game Gear. The Sega Game Gear. It has no light in the background. So it's kind of, uh, it's missing the battery covers, which are easily replaceable with generic ones on eBay for like a dollar a piece. But this is the Sega Game Gear. You can see your basic controls, just like the Sega had, the D-pad on the left side, your speakers in the lower left-hand corner. On the right, you got your start button and your A and B buttons. This was your Sega Genesis controller right here. I got a couple of them. And then there's just a couple games in here. Got a copy of Sonic, the original one, another copy of that. Another copy of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. And there was one Game Gear game in here as well. This is what your Game Gear games look like. This is a Sonic game for Game Gear. Robbery without a gun. That Tetris looks fun. Yes, it does. All right, so that's a $5 box. Um, I picked up these old toys. Some lady had a big zip-up bag that was like from a sleeping bag or something like that, a hot, uh, a hot blanket. She had these little McDonald's toys, and I dug through it for a quarter a piece. I got this old, like, 80s Mario. He sticks. He's got this little spring-loaded thing on him. He sticks, and he actually jumps when it releases. I got a little Goomba from Mario. This is a little Mario Kart Toad action figure. Vroom, vroom. And then this I found in another sale. Now, a lady had $20 on this. And I was like, 20 bucks? Are you freaking kidding me? This came with the charger. And in all honesty, it was worth 20 bucks, but I wasn't paying 20 bucks for it. You know what I'm saying? I looked at her. I said, so you got a DSi XL 25th anniversary Super Mario edition. I was like, but you got 20 bucks on it? She's like... It's just a number that we threw on there. She's like, what do you want to give me for it? I said, I'll give you five bucks. Okay, I take it. So I got this Nintendo DSi XL console, 25th anniversary Super Mario edition, with the charger for $5. Those retail for about 100 or so dollars online. Used. All right, let's move this box. All right, we're starting to wind down, which is good because I'm already a little off schedule. Probably not going to make it to the field on time. One guy sold me this whole bag of uh, Nintendo 64 games for bucks. South Park. Banjo-Tooie, which is actually a rare, harder-to-find game. It's like the sister of Banjo because another WCW NWO revenge. Dun -dun. Dun -dun 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 That's, um... 007 Goldeneye, one of the most popular and funnest games on the 64. In the Zone 98. What's up? What's up, Black Yoshi? How you doing, man? Welcome back to the stream. Thanks for stopping in. This is Rampage 2, guys. The original Rampage debuted on the NES, original Nintendo. That's part two that they made on 64. Another $50 Mario Kart 64. I paid $10 for this bag. Resident Evil 2. This is the only Resident Evil that Nintendo made on any console until the GameCube when they remastered the whole set. 
Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six. You guys are familiar with Rainbow Six Siege? This is the first Tom Clancy Rainbow Six game ever made for N64. Donkey Kong 64. Turok 2. Turok is a dinosaur hunter. It's a pretty cool game. And Mario Party 2. Ding, ding, ding. I showed you Mario Party 3 earlier. That is Mario Party 2. Those games go for $30 to $50 a pop. I paid $10 for this bag of N64 games. And that's what the guy asked for. He said, uh, what, are you, what are you thinking for all the games? Uh, how about give me 10 bucks for the bag? I took that shit and ran so fast, you guys probably couldn't even see me if you tried. All right, this bag we got. This actually doesn't work. This actually doesn't work. I've got to figure out what's wrong with it, but I got this neat little zip-up case. This was given to me for free. This was given to me for free, and it looks like it's in phenomenal shape, but it doesn't work. So i got to open it up and take a look at the chip and see if anything's damaged or what's going on with it. But this is a blue Game Boy Color, like the one I showed you a little while ago. There was like five games in here. These are what your Game Boy Color games look like. Tony Hawk. They're like a clear cartridge, which is pretty cool. You can see the battery pack and all the inserts, the um, chip and everything inside. Test drive. Frogger. Frogger 2, you guys. Frogger, the classic from the arcade. Black Bass Fishing. And a Super Mario Brothers Deluxe game. So all that was given to me. That stuff's free. I will fix that Game Boy. I just have to find out why the power source isn't triggering when you turn it on. But I will fix that. Um... I got this Nintendo 64 set for $5. Same lady that gave me the Game Boy gave me this for 5 bucks. Diddy Kong Racing again. One of the first Madden games ever made in 2000. NFL Club 99. Pokemon Snap, a little spinoff of a Pokemon minigame. 1080 Snowboarding. And another copy of Donkey Kong 64. And then it came with this very, very rare purple colored controller those go for about $25 a piece online and we got another one of our traditional charcoal black Nintendo 64 consoles so the lady that gave me that broken Game Boy with the games sold me this whole bag for five bucks and again that's what she asked for it ma'am how much do you want for this stuff uh, how about five dollars deal thank you thank you so that's that bag all right we're winding down now it's good because I got to really fly out of here in a minute um, paid $10 for this. I found them cheaper, but I got online. This is worth quite a bit. This is a platinum Nintendo GameCube. GameCube came out with a bunch of different color systems, some limited edition Pokemon, Pokemon ones and stuff. This is a Nintendo GameCube. And this is actually one of my favorite and the neatest consoles that I, they have ever made. Four controllers and two memory cards in the front. Front, front lower left button is your reset button. The right side is to open the top where you put your game. Nintendo GameCube had little tiny round discs for games, like really, really small ones like the PSP. Your power button's there. We got all our wires and stuff in here. This is your controller for your GameCube. Nintendo's controllers got more buttons on them earlier than PlayStation did. I think PlayStation kept it simple purposely for the, the player, but the GameCube didn't care. They added a lot of buttons like the N64. So that was a $10 platinum color Nintendo GameCube that I purchased just uh, Friday actually Friday afternoon this bag I paid 10 bucks for this is another Nintendo 64 GameCube controller is the goofiest ever I hear you Aaron I hear you man but I realize it yellow 64 controller these are all worth about 25 a piece any of these colored controllers are worth about 25 bucks red and then this is the traditional gray that came with the console. That's still worth 15, 20 bucks though. I paid $10 for this bag. I got those three controllers. I got a Major League All-Star Baseball game. Yes, they actually um, get, or uh, I'm sorry, Raymond, they actually made a GameCube controller for the Switch. Or the Wii, I'm sorry, the Wii that you can use. This is another 1080p and another black N64 console. I paid $10 for that bag. There's probably $100 to $150 worth of stuff in there. That's at retail value. I, of course, would sell it significantly less than that. Um, black Yoshi, if you're still here, if you want to add me on PlayStation or Facebook, 
I will sell you pretty much whatever you want at a very generous price, far less than retail and uh, with a friendly discount on top of it. Because I'm that kind of guy. All right. We're down to the last two boxes, guys. I have one of these already with the actual lunch box. But these are from, uh, what was it, 88. So these are original Nintendo. This is a thermos that came in a lunch pail. Super Mario Brothers. They're very artistic, highly decorated, very, very collectible. I love them. I actually have another one of these. I may be selling this someday if somebody's interested. Okay. Super Mario Brothers 98 thermos. These aren't retro, but I've been um, doing a collection of this stuff lately. So I went ahead and I picked these up because they're only a quarter apiece. Three little Minecraft books for the Minecraft game. I grabbed those real quick. As you can see, guys, um, I have another storage unit that's completely and totally fact, uh, packed full right to the ceiling and stuff. I will be in touch soon about a pretty large bundle of stuff I want soon, man. I could literally spend the rest of my life in your storage unit. Bro, you have no idea. This is just one of my storage units. The other one is a giant mess. I mean, it's as organized as it could be, but it was full. That's why I had to get this one. Um, I've been buying a lot of furniture lately for my storage. You guys can see there's a bunch of furniture in here that I've either gotten for free or gotten for pennies ton of gaming stuff um i gotta reorganize the storage unit and i can fit a ton 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 more stuff in here i just haven't had the time all right this here the lady went to her storage unit for me this out she thought it was a nintendo but it wasn't it turns out it's more valuable than a nintendo which i hadn't realized that um atari had gone up in value this much lately but this is an atari 5200 console all right, and it actually has a built-in slot for the games in the back and stuff, which I think was an extra accessory that they must have purchased. I never even really went through this. I looked at the console. The price was right. She sold it to me for $13. Um, actually, I got this box full for $13 and one of those NES track pads. This is just a PSP thing that I picked up for $0.50. Cents. Every Extend Extra, I don't really know what it is. It looks like some mini games. That was $0.50. Cents. I'm not a big PSP guy, but I always pick up a bargain. All right, so this is the rest of the Atari. Um, there's wires, controllers, joysticks. There's some games in here. Some games worth some money. That's probably the first Pac-Man that was made for the Atari 5200. They might have had it on the 2600, actually, so maybe it's not the first one. But that's probably worth some cash. We got Frogger, the original Frogger. I didn't even look through these yet, so you guys are, I'm literally opening these for the first time, as you guys know. Atari Football. I said there was about 10 games in here. I didn't even look at it. Like I said, I got the bat, the box for 10 bucks, so I just took it. Space Invaders. I can honestly say, I think these are the first 5200 games I have. I've gotten a 5200 console before, but I think I had other Atari games with it, because I don't remember the Atari games being this big. Super Breakout. So this um, might be a pretty valuable set right here, actually. Centipede. I'm going to have to Google some of these in the car. Ooh, that one's going to be worth some money. Mrs. Pac-Man. That's definitely worth some money right there. What else we got in here? Popeye! Popeye game for the Atari 5200. Sweet. And I think that may be it. No, there's one more in here. What we got? Pole Position. That's another racing game. Sorry, 5200 stuff. Um, Defender. This lady had all the good games for the Atari. And I do believe that's all the games. I think so. There's that in the bottom of it. What is that? Oh, it's just an extra joystick. Okay, so that's our little Atari 5200 collection we got for 10 bucks. Let's put that in there. We're down to the last box, guys, and then I got to bail because I got some shit to do, man. I got some shit to do. I guess I'm starting here without breaking it. All right. That's in. All right, so the last box, these aren't really retro. Some of them kind of are, but this guy sold me. Um, actually, this is the last on the cart, but I got one more thing to show you, too, that I'm really thrilled about. It's probably my favorite items of the week, this week. But this guy sold me. Now, when you guys buy manuals and uh, strategy guides, when you guys buy strategy guides for games, from like GameStop or whatever, they have a soft cover one and then they have a collector's edition. These things are like 40 bucks a piece, all right? 
they have a collector's edition hardcover books for games. This guy sold all these books to me for 50 cents a piece, and they're literally like $40 books. Borderlands 2, game of the year. These are highly decorated artistic books that are hardcover for all these video games. I got some cool shit in here, guys. Tomb Raider, limited edition. Just look at the cover art on these, though. I mean, the work that's put into these books, 50 cents a piece I paid for these. For you Grand Theft Auto fans, Grand Theft Auto 5, Titanfall. Some of these are paperbacks, um, but the paperback ones are actually retro. They're actually worth some cash, like this one here. Final Fantasy IX for PlayStation 1. If you guys are familiar with those games. This guy was a fan of a lot of the games that I'm really into. And he had some really cool shit, and I took them all for that price. I was like, dude, I'll take them all. Bat and Batman Arkham Origins. Just the cover art alone. Any collector, you know, on eBay or in my store, if I sell these at the right price, they're going to get taken. This is Final Fantasy XII. This is for PlayStation 2. This is not a hardcover. It does have a book cover on it, though. And it's actually a really, really artistic, really neat book cover. Another one of the Batman, Arkham Origins. Two different books he had for this game. Final Fantasy X3 Part 2. Hardcover. This is my favorite one in the set, and I already have this. So this will be for sale. Zelda Hyrule Historia. This book has some awesome, awesome pictures and stuff in it. If you like Zelda and you're a collector, this is one of those books that, I mean, you really want to have. Thanks, Aaron Woods. What's up? Willow Haver. How you doing, man? But just check out some of the artwork in the Zelda book. It's insane. And this is a very, very valuable book as well. Final Fantasy X2 for PlayStation 1. I'm sorry, PlayStation 2. Final Fantasy X2 for PlayStation 2. Final Fantasy 13, which is on the PS3. They are awesome, man. I was thrilled when I found them because I wasn't having the best day finding stuff yesterday. I didn't really miss much. There just wasn't a lot around. Final Fantasy 8 for PlayStation 1. Yes, the artwork is absolutely phenomenal. That's what gives them their value. But the thing is, they're only valuable to collectors. You know what I'm saying? So unless you can find a collector who wants to buy them, they're probably not going to sell. But I'd be perfectly fine hanging on to them. Halo 4. Check this one out. This is one of the best ones in the collection. I love it. Halo 4 hardcover book. Halo Reach. Signature series guide. I got to finish up. Halo 2. This is for original Xbox. I played that player on this game. I was top 1,500 in the world overall in multiplayer out of millions of people. I was very good at Halo 2. It was a lot of fun. Halo 3. I am a big Halo fan. I have a couple of these books already, but to find all these, especially the ones I don't have, was very neat. Halo the Odds. That was probably kind of like the worst Halo in the, in the series, in my opinion. As far as I played it. I mean, no Halos are terrible, but that one was very good. This, I'm very thrilled with as well. Collector's edition of Call of Duty Ghosts. Ghosts is my second favorite Call of Duty of all time. I've lived Call of Duty for years and played them all. This Ghost was my second favorite, only to Black Ops 1. I'm very thrilled to have that. And the last book is Battlefield 4. So, guys, I, I literally, I'll be honest with you. I gave this guy 20 bucks for two boxes full of stuff. So I didn't even pay 50 cents a piece for these books. And they're all in brand new condition. They're all from games that actually carry some value, mostly RPGs or classic shooters. This was a very heavy box. I literally had to walk a city block, one end of the other, to get back to my truck with this box. And I was like dying. It was like 85 on I'm like, oh my God, I am not gonna make it. <laughs> but I did. I wasn't letting them hit the floor and get, get damaged. That wouldn't have been very cool. I'd have been pretty upset with myself. So I toughened up. All right, guys. So it's been 45 minutes. Um, I'm definitely behind. I'm probably not going to make it to the field on time. I'm going to have to get up out of here in a minute. But I'm going to show you my favorite items of the last two weeks before I go. And this is everything I got over the two weeks. You guys are all caught up. 
All right, this is our empty cart. And last but not least, guys, I'm a big fan of action figures. I'm a big fan of action figures. Any of you guys like Tomb Raider? Let's walk this cart back while I ask this question. Do any of you guys like Tomb Raider? Is there any Tomb Raider fans out there? Because I like Tomb Raider. I mean, I don't keep up on the games like really often. I played the first three on PlayStation 1 and I loved them. I beat them, all three of them. But is there any Tomb Raider fans? That's what I want to know. Any Tomb Raider fans in the house right now? Thanks, Get again. I'm glad that you enjoy the streams, man. Skittles, what's up? Thanks for stopping in, Skittle. So I'm not seeing any new comments come up. Oh, yeah, buddy. Okay, love Tomb Raider. There we go. All right, so the guy that I got all of them books off of, he sold me all those books and a box full of action figures for 20 bucks. And actually, to be honest with you, some of them are statues. Okay, but if you like Tomb Raider, check these bad boys out. I got these action figures and statues all in these two boxes that I paid a total of 20 bucks for with all the books and all the action figures. Croftway, she's sexy, huh, for a video game character? I gotta, all right, I'm sorry, I gotta, I gotta keep my mouth shut. I'm just kidding. Anyhow, I ended up with all of these. I've never seen them before. I know for a fact that they were very expensive. I know they were because I know this stuff. And I know that, um, you know, they're hard to find and they don't really lose value. Okay, so this guy here, this is a Warcraft demon. For any of those of you that are familiar with Warcraft, this is a big Warcraft demon. I don't really follow Warcraft much, but it does look pretty cool. The characters look pretty cool and shit. So we had this, and I was like, yeah, I'll take that. I threw it in my box, this Warcraft character. All right, so he came with these wings. Um, they're detachable wings. Obviously, there's two of them. These are his demon wings. I got the set of those. All right, guys, last two items of the stream until next week is our two Tomb Raider statues. This one's about eight inches high, eight to 10 inches high. It's got a base. It's Lara with her classic bow and arrow doing some work. Very, very highly detailed, very awesome collectible statues. And this one, I was absolutely thrilled about. This is a foot tall, maybe over a foot tall. This is Miss Lara Croft doing what she does. She's got a flare in her hand. She's got a pickaxe. She's got her little six shooter on her hip and a holster. She's got her bow and arrows on her back. This is my one foot tall Lara Croft Tomb Raider statue that I found. And guys, I literally got every item I showed you in the last two boxes for less than a dollar. You know how much this probably cost by itself? You know how much it's probably worth right now, which I'll be keeping these. These will be getting displayed in my game room um, one day when I actually get around to the time after my business to set it up and all that. But that is, um, that's everything, guys. I know not, not really like the blockbuster weeks I've had in the first two episodes, but I thought it was definitely worthy of another episode. So that's the last two weeks finds, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to Hulk smash that like button. Thank you very much for hanging out with me. I'm going to fly on out of here. What's up, Goku? Thanks for stopping in. Chilling with killing, buddy. Um, I left my lock on the cart, I think. We're going to need that. We're going to need that. Oh, where's it at? Somebody grab it. I think I've lost my lock. You didn't just happen to get a padlock off here, did you? Nope. Hmm. Are you the one that just put that one away? Yeah. What the hell did I do with it then? Thanks, dude. Oh, I see it. It's on the ground. It fell off the cart. Here it is. Okay. Get the clock out of here. So, guys, it's uh, LMS Killing Time coming live from my furniture and retro gaming storage unit. Hope you guys really enjoyed the stream for your time. I appreciate your time. Thanks for chilling with Killing most of all. Sometime I'll take you guys over and show you my other storage unit that's completely packed full from wall to wall. I open the door and there might not be a good ending of the stream. No, I'm just playing. We'll be all right. But this is um this is what I this has all been put in here since like uh, February this year. This is all the stuff I purchased. So we're gonna shut the door on this bad boy for now, guys. I appreciate y'all chilling with me. Have a wonderful day. I'll be streaming games around 2, 3 p.m. Eastern. Probably start out with some Friday the 13th again. Maybe go with some Dead by Daylight or some Call of Duty later on. Maybe some Realm Royale, depending on what friends are playing what. But uh, be safe out there. You know the world's a crazy place. It only takes that one evil son of a bitch to ruin your life. Don't let it be you. Love you guys. Watch your backs. 
your friends' backs, your family's backs. Make sure they got your back. I got your back. And I know for damn sure the Legion's got mine. So you guys have a great day. Enjoy your Sunday. I'm going to go get an errand run, and then I'm going to go play some football. I'll talk to you guys a little bit later on when I live stream some more Friday the 13th. Thanks for chilling with Kellen time. Thank you to the Mod Squad for being here. Best in the business, baby. I'm putting a lock onto this bad boy stream. It's kind of hard to do with my left hand, though. I think we can figure it out.